Welcome back. We're going to discuss compliance management. Lesson topics that will be discussed using software to the letter of the law. You don't own the software, which is a, uh, a hard thing for a lot of people to understand, but we'll talk about that. You certainly are being monitored for how you're using that software as well. Okay, so software asset management, what's the real scope of it? Well, it's a business practice and it supports that management of the software so that you're using it correctly, you're using it for the, what you need it for, um, for the betterment of the organization. They actually, in terms of practices, frequently involve how the software is being used, why the software is being used, and how does it move around in the organization. Now, here's some quotes, and I'm going to read these quotes for you, but these are actual quotes from people um, that we've run into over the uh, several years now um, in terms of their view of compliance management. So, software asset management will cost me money, I'd rather ignore it. Now, I've literally had a couple of people in my courses tell me that their organization budgets every year um, several million dollars just to pay the fines. Now, the problem with that is that once the software publishers realize that the company is just doing the budgeting, they're going to go back to them over and over again because it's basically giving them a blank check. It's cheaper to pay the fine if I'm audited. Well. Um, as you'll see later on, software asset management just isn't about the fines, it's about making certain you're spending your money wisely. If I pretend that I don't know what it is, I won't have to worry about it. I used to believe this about blood pressure until my doctor told me I had high blood pressure and then I had to deal with it. Same thing with software asset management. I want to decide what software I need for my department. If we have centralized software asset management, I'll lose control. This is certainly a valid uh, concern. And in many cases, what organizations have said to that business unit, okay, you want to buy your own software, here's the rules. After looking at the rules, that business unit decides that they don't want to manage it anymore. We buy from one reseller, they worry about compliance, so I don't have to. It's totally false. Um, purchasing from one reseller, certainly that reseller can provide you with the valid uh, information that you may need to survive a, an audit. But at the end of the day, you own it and you're responsible for it. And in one of my favorites, if it was really important, we would know exactly what to do. Um, you know, it is really important, you just haven't been audited to force you to do it, or you've been very busy looking in other directions, which is, you know, totally understandable, but it is extremely important, and organizations worldwide are doing this. So what is compliance? And, you know, this definition um, is somewhat ambiguous, but it and leaves some room for interpretation um, because compliance is achieved by legally acquiring and configuring a genuine copy of a product according to copyright. Now that's an extremely strong statement, but it also adds to it accordance with the license terms and conditions specified by the copyright holder. And that's where the ambiguity comes into because these licenses that we are forced to inherit don't clearly state what compliance is. The user organization needs to be able to prove this compliance through documentation at each and every step. And we'll talk about that more and more as we go along. So, bigger picture on compliance, intellectual property law includes patents and products with copyright information. Patents are not very common for software, but they can be found out there. Also, copyright laws have a very long history and are amended to frequently. They cover the product, copyright, not just software. Now, with copyright laws, those are the foundation for what governs software. So you have the licensing agreement, but even if you don't have the licensing agreement, software worldwide falls under copyright laws. And copyright law is granted to the copyright holder. Now this varies sometimes from country to country, but essentially the person who creates the work is the owner of that material and is therefore the copyright owner and has protections internationally under copyright laws. So if you think back to the legislation key process area, this is where you would want to monitor changes to copyright laws in your country and also in international treaties. Current hot topics for copyright is digital rights. It's huge. Um, it's not just software that gets pirated. It's music, it's artwork, it's movies. 
And because of that, there's a strong desire by large organizations to protect their copyrighted material. Other compliance influences include trading agreements, so border issues. One of the uh, examples of the United Nations, WIPO, or World Intellectual Property Organization. The majority of countries are actually falling under some type of international treaty agreement. The contract or license or legal agreement is also a piece of this puzzle, which is added to by the actual creator of the copyright material. Now let's look at this definition. I want to read this word for word. Software piracy, which is the making, selling, and or use of software without the permission of the copyright owner. Now think about this. The licensing agreement for software and how you should be using it varies from software to software. And that licensing agreement usually isn't very clear on defining what compliance is. So even with the best intentions, an organization that is illegally using software is considered a software pirate by some organizations. You know, again, the intent is to use it correctly, but it, they're not using it correctly because it just isn't clear. Compliance enforcement. These are processes and procedures that are used by the copyright holders or the representatives of copyright holders to ensure that compliance uh, is, is, is occurring with the use of the software according to the licensing agreement. This is one of the major challenges with software asset management, is understanding how can I use the software. The complexity varies greatly from product to product and from software publisher to software publisher. So how does an organization become non-compliant? Well, one is through internet piracy. Ever receive an email offering to purchase, say, uh, Adobe Creative Suite for $50? Chances are, it's not a, a valid copy or a legal copy. Or just downloading software from a server somewhere on the internet. Hard disk loading. Hard disk loading is the act of taking one licensed copy of software, say Microsoft Office, and installing that copy on multiple computers. This is using that one license then is out of compliance because you've only purchased one license. Soft lifting is an innocent act whereby maybe a coworker provides you with software or even artwork on a USB or thumb drive so that you can copy it on your own computer. Counterfeiting is a huge problem to the extent of well over $40 billion reported uh, worldwide in counterfeiting. And this is taking software and making counterfeit downloads or CDs or DVDs and selling them without the permission of the publisher. Software rental or resale or subscriptions done without the right to offer these is another area. So this is an extremely important thing to watch out with cloud computing. If a organization is providing cloud service, do they have the right to provide that software over the internet? Bundle package suite or suite breaking is also something that is easy to do because technology lets you. For example, let's say you've purchased Microsoft Office. You install Excel on computer A, you install Word on computer B, and PowerPoint on computer C using the same product key. That's called bundle suite breaking or bundle package breaking. This is not according to the terms and conditions of the licensing agreement. It is meant to be installed on one computer. And then finally, a huge part of this, and we'll talk about it more, is inaccurate documentation management. We'll look at all of the documents that are needed to prove compliance for your software. And then ineffective policies, people doing what they want, when they want, breaking the compliance requirements of that software. So let's talk about some of the software industry member organizations. And we're going to talk about this one here called BSA, or the Business Software Alliance. This organization is international in scope and coverage, and they are extremely, out of all of the organizations, very, very active. I want to point out that this organization exists not through some government act, but through the um, collection of software publishers like a Microsoft and an Adobe that give BSA the rights to go in and audit you on behalf of those publishers. The website can be found at bsa.org. 
Another one is the Software and Information Industry Association, or SIIA. Very similar to BSA, they are international scope and coverage. Um, they've been given right by software publishers to come in and audit you. They will also pay for rewards for non-compliance which are, uh, is extremely important for you to understand within your own organization. SIIA.net is their website. I also want to point out something about these organizations. They'll offer up to $1 million reward for turning in your company for using software illegally. This is extremely important for you to understand because they will advertise. If you go to a job site like monster.com, they will advertise on the job site. They may do commercials on the radio. Uh, they may actually be at conferences where your technology people go. They may actually have phone interviews calling randomly into your organization asking you about how you use software in your organization and how many users there are. From that you need to understand you need to create policies and you need to educate. One policy is never ever discuss the infrastructure of your organization to anyone outside the organization. The other one is to be aware that if someone notices or identifies a non-compliant event, they should report it to IT asset management and that person needs to be uh, made assured that, they're going to, that the, their concerns will be addressed. Because the funny thing about, especially the BSA, the majority of tips that come into the BSA come from current employees. One may think that it would come from disgruntled employees, but the truth of the matter is it's current employees who have complained about this illegal use of software to the point where they're not being listened to, and then they call one of these associations. Another organization focused literally in, in specifically I should say in the UK, is FAST, Federation Against Software. Um, it is the UK and it turns over evidence to the publishers. Our experience with this organization is that they are more focused on the education piece. They do offer a reward if you turn in your organization. And their website can be found at fast.org.uk. Now, here's the specific in the US, of course. Government agencies like the DOG or computer crimes uh, can also get involved with the legal or illegal use of, of software. And in the recording industry, or RIAA, um, they have U.S. and certainly global allies. They pay rewards for non-compliance and they can be found at RIAA.com as well. In addition to that, you have the MPAA or Motion Picture Association, U.S. and Global Allies. I want to point out something, you know, ask yourself, why do we care about motion picture? And why do we care about the recording industry? Well, certainly, um, some of your tools may discover that there's the illegal use of, of music or movies in your organization. But more importantly, take into consideration that these two associations spend a lot of money lobbying governments to tighten copyright laws. So when those copyright laws are tightened, that will trickle down and impact how you manage your software. So again, going back to the legislation key process area, one of the areas of focus should be on these two associations, MPAA and RIAA. Furthermore, look for news that you can subscribe to um, to monitor their actual lobbying efforts to understand where they're going and how they want copyright to be enforced. Again, they pay for uh, awards for noncompliance and the MPAA.org website is where you can find out more information about their efforts. Thank you very much, and I will see you in the next session.